Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and thanks to the fantastic folks over at Illumin Arms, we have a Sig Spear to run through a two-gun match today. Uh, this, this is, by the way, the same Sig Spear that's been running around all of the other YouTube channels. So if you saw the mud test on InRange, if you saw Grand Thumb's review of this video, this is the same rifle here once again. Now. Uh, it is about 105 degrees out today. I figured the rifle's desert color, so I should use some desert camo. I'm in armored division, of course, and we'll also shoot this with the appropriate pistol to match with it, a Coyote Desert Tan SIG M17. So, uh, we got four stages today. Three of them involve rifle, one of them is long range rifle. Let's just uh, dig right into it. I started on stage four. This is the long range rifle stage. We have four plates at about 225 yards here. And uh, you simply have to hit each plate once. These are mini I6. You have to hit each plate once through the tire. You then repeat this three more times, moving the tire between positions. And I just straight up cleaned this on the first run. Uh, if there's one thing that really jumps out to me about the Spear or the M5, it's that it is a very accurate rifle. I found this when I was on the range zeroing it to begin with. Uh, found it here, it is just really easy to make hits with. So I'm shooting it, by the way, with a Night Force 1 to 8. is not an official scope. It's not a scope that comes, not a military scope, I should say. Not a scope that came on the rifle. Uh, it's one that I already had myself. In fact, it's the scope off the uh, Springfield Hellion. And I think it's a really great fit for the spear. Uh, as for recoil, really fairly light. I would definitely call this lighter than a 308 in terms of recoil. Uh, now I'm using the standard training ammo, which is full brass case, and that is rated by SIG at 2,750 feet per second out of a 16-inch barrel. I am only shooting it here out of a 13-inch barrel, which the M5 uses, so it's going to be even less. Uh, I'm going to guess something like 2,600 feet per second, so and 135 grain bullets, so it is actually ballistically less than a 7.62 NATO uh, at this point out of a 13-inch barrel. So one would hopefully expect it to have fairly right, light recoil out of an 11-pound rifle. One other thing that really stood out to me, both in my initial zeroing and also shooting here in the match, is I had absolutely no gas in the face from the suppressor. And that was uh, fantastic. Uh, in fact, it was... I just didn't even notice that I wasn't getting hit by gas from the suppressor until I actually stopped and thought about it at the end of the stage. I am so used to, as a left-hander, just having eye-watering propellant gas coming out the ejection port that it was really cool not to. And that was a specific uh, target of the suppressor development for this rifle. Did really well here. Fifth out of 45 shooters. Would have done even better if I didn't have to reload. Now, our next stage is starts with one round of rifle and then a pistol plate, uh, plate rack. It's essentially an all-pistol uh, stage, but um, this stage will consist of three individual strings because there are three sets of plates on that plate rack. So you put run, one round on paper, and then you have to knock down all six plates. So I, I'm doing this with the 320. I had a little bit of intermittent issue um, and the shooting challenges in this particular match were pretty challenging so again one round on paper now we have a second uh, row of plates on the plate rack and they are square and smaller so it's going to take a little bit more time to get them down by the way i'm using uh one of the old m uh what, m84 uh, holsters which is a little bit tight on the 320 that's why it takes some time to get the thing out of its uh, holster there on each stage. Two, two, so, three, one. now our third iteration, one round on paper, and then those little tiny triangle uh, plates that are really quite challenging. Uh, by the way, we had brutality rules in effect here, so every penalty is 60 seconds. There's one of the, the first of the malfunctions I'll have through the course of this match. None of them were any big deal, really. They were all the same. It was all the slide didn't quite go all into battery. Uh, and I had to kind of whack it with the palm of my hand. 
Part time is 30 seconds. And I do not make it here. So that right. that gets me 180 seconds worth of penalties on the stage, which is Stand unfortunate. Ball. All right, this one is a combination of rifle and pistol. And uh, what this brought home to me was that the rifle recoil is really quite soft, quite mild. Uh, very easy to make quick controlled pairs uh, with the rifle on paper. Um, and someone a little bit better shot could have done it even better than I was doing here. Now, yeah, I'm hitting the wood stick on the target and that's deflecting bullets around. Uh, you have to get two hits on that little tiny uh, steel popper. One more malfunction on the seat there. Uh, and then you return to the rifle, throwing a 60 pound kettlebell. That's, uh, I believe, what would that be? It'd be like a 28 kilo kettlebell, throwing it over the wall each time. And then you engage one paper target, you have to have two hits on it. And you simply do this back and forth five times for a total of 10 hits with the pistol and 10 hits with the rifle. And what's killing me here is pistol shooting. Um, partly, like, would have been a little bit easier with a dot on the pistol, which I didn't have in this case. Uh, also would have been better if I was just a better pistol shot. But uh, in general, the, the shooting challenges, the pistol shooting challenges, especially in this match, were quite challenging. Good practice. Uh, you can see here I, I opted for resting the pistol on the barrel which helped. I'm still having trouble with it, but it was better than uh, than when I was trying to shoot it just completely freehand. Wasn't quite sure that I made uh, both hits on the paper. That was the longest paper there. And of course, it's a 60 second penalty if one of those shots doesn't go on paper, so I figured I'd just take the extra two seconds and make a, a third shot at it. And I get the last pistol shot there right as the buzzer goes off. So oh, that was a lot. That was a lot harder than I looked. Got pretty winded there, and another four penalties. So last stage is pistol only. This is kind of a clever idea from Paul Shanks, the match director. You have to earn the number of pistol shots you get. You've got three kettlebells, light, medium, and heavy. Uh, 25, 45, and 60 pound. And a swing with the light kettlebell earns you one shot with the pistol. The medium gets you two, and the heavy gets you three per swing. So, oh, there we go. That's number three malfunction on the sig. Uh, you s do some kettlebell swings to build up a number of shots you're allowed, and uh, you get to choose how many you do. So, I took a gamble here, went with five, which earns me 15 shots. Um, I probably should have done uh, more than that right off the bat. Well, I clearly should have done more than that right off the bat. Uh, and I just start having trouble on the on the Texas Stars here. So there you go. That's my 15 shots. Now I have to go earn a couple more shots. I, again, optimistically figure three plates, nine shots ought to be plenty, right? What could What could possibly go wrong? Well, there's what could go wrong. Still, still going wrong. Oh, now I'm out of ammo. Not going according to plan. <laughs> it is indeed definitely not going according to plan. Uh, I had a great time with the rifle on this match, in this match. I had a really unpleasant time with <laughs> with the uh, M17 pistol. This is, by the way, a SIG commercial M17. It's not one of the surplus military ones. Um, basically brand new out of the box, too. It is zeroed properly. I'm just having trouble making good hits with it here today. All right, there we go. And, ooh, finally. Drop your mag. Overall conclusions, flag fest kind of sucks in the heat. I figured, expected that. The helmet kind of sucks, heat or no heat. The rifle is fantastic. Uh, if I were to distill my experience with this rifle down to just a few sentences, it would be, it is heavy and it's front heavy. It can be both of those things simultaneously because they're not synonymous. Uh, it is also a fantastic shooting rifle. Very accurate, very precise. Uh, had fantastic experience actually shooting. The recoil is relatively soft because we are using the training. Uh, I talked about the ammo and the pressure levels and all of that stuff in yesterday's 
uh, tabletop video. So if you didn't see that, uh, if you're interested in a more in-depth look at how this works, where it came from, and where it's going, definitely check out that video. Uh, I think it will be very interesting to watch this go through actual uh, field adoption for the U.S. Army Infantry Combat Force. Uh, it is a good rifle. Is it the right, uh, the right rifle for the mission? Time will tell. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Again, a big thanks to Illumin Arms uh, for making this rifle and the ammunition available to me and a bunch of other people. Uh, they are truly fantastic dudes to do that with their crazy expensive uh, M5 6 Spear. Thanks for watching.